Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. This is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marquee of Living Streams International, bringing you matters of faith with Graphic Online. Living Streams International, we meet on Sundays behind the trade fair, behind Zenith College. And uh, this uh, morning, I'd like to capture my thoughts uh, with this simple word. And some of it is quite local, but you understand. It's, uh, it's called, no more sayo. <laughs> no more sayo. Uh, let me explain. That is basically no more fight. You, when we were kids, I mean, uh, growing up, I mean, when two people are about to fight or something, there's going to be a fight. What people would say, it's in our local, they'll say, Sayo, Sayo, Sayo. That's it, hey, there's a fight too. And it's, uh, Sayo is the, is the appellation that is used to announce a fight. So Sayo, Sayo, and then somebody will say, Onupa Bejello, that is, is there no big man to separate the, uh, the protagonist? And that was what um, uh, we, we learned. So no more Sayo just simply means no more fight. Now, in Genesis chapter 13, verse 8, Genesis chapter 13 speaks of a very interesting period in Abraham's life. God spoke to Abraham. God called Abraham. But in, Abraham, in the pursuit of Abraham's destiny, in the pursuit of his dream, he took his nephew Lot with him. He was under no obligation whatsoever to take Lot with him. But then he took him with him out of a soulish attachment, out of mercy, out of bowels of mercy and grace. He wanted his nephew to also see a new life. Now, one way or the other, God blessed Abraham. And you know, we have a proverb in our local language, when it gets full, it touches the lead, the pan lead. Uh, I can't say it in tree. You don't want me to speak to you right now because it might be like tongues. But guess what? As a result of Abraham's blessing, it spilled over. There was a spillover of blessing and Lot also began to be blessed. And they had so much sheep, they had so much cattle, they had so much livestock that the Bible says the land became heavy. The land could not contain them. So there, were, there was a battle, there was a fierce fight between Abraham's headsmen and Lot's headsmen. And Abraham's headsmen, I mean Lot's headsmen were fighting for, I mean they were fighting for grazing grounds. I mean don't ask me whether, I, I don't know. I mean but they were fighting for grazing grounds. And as a result of that there was a fierce fight between them. And then, you know, Abraham came to town. And when Abraham came to town, I was amazed at what he said. He should have called Lot and said to him, my friend, you are being blessed because of me. So, you know, you go away and then you leave. And then, you know, but Abraham, the first statement he made that is of primary importance, he says, let us not fight. Let us not fight. We are kindred. We are, we are blood. Let us not fight. That was, that was the approach of wisdom. Abraham sunk it into Lot that if you won't separate the people, if you won't tell the people to stop fighting, I have heard that there is a fight. But I'm calling you and I'm telling you, we have command over our people. Let us not fight. Tell your people to stop fighting. I will tell my people to stop fighting. Let us not fight. Because listen, the land, there's so much there's so much ahead of us. Let us not fight. So, number one, Abraham recognized that they are kindred. Number two, Abraham took the challenge that, listen, the challenge of leadership. We are leaders. We can't allow our people to fight. And this is where this comes to the, the crunch of the matter. We are approaching election. And I'd like to appeal to the leaders of the various parties, especially the two most prominent parties in this nation. That is the NPP and the NDC. The leadership, let there be a voice, not just a voice to political platitudes, self-serving or trying to serve this thing, but that's not what it is. What we want is a sincere, consensuous effort by the leadership of these two parties to tell their people, let us not fight. Why? Because we're one nation, we're one people, and we're one destiny. If you employ your people to fight, our nation will be destroyed, our nation will be wrecked, our security will be in smithereens, our peace 
will be in tatters and our prosperity will be beyond our reach. So, this is the time for leadership to look at their followers and say to them, let us not fight. Not just let us not fight by, by mouth, but making sure, ensuring that the political will of the people are respected and that the choice of the people are respected. No, more, no intimidation, no use of force to either um, take it by force or to impose by force. No. Let us not fight. We are one nation, one people, one destiny. A late general who was a president, head of state of this nation said, we are one nation, we are one people, and we are one destiny. Let us not fight. See you later.